is CGTN, China Global Television Network. The United Nations is marking its 75th anniversary and its 2020 annual General Assembly, which was meant to be especially big, has gone virtual due to the COVID-19 pandemic. World leaders have been addressing the session via video, a first in the UN's history, as nations rally heavily under the theme reaffirming a collective commitment to multilateralism. Also top on the agenda are combating the coronavirus pandemic and climate change, at the Assembly, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres appealed for global solidarity, cautioning that COVID-19 may not only be a wake-up call, but potentially a dress rehearsal for more challenges to come. This week on Talk Africa, we look into the UN's call for solidarity and its push for peace, security and development in an increasingly divided world. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. Before we start our conversation, let's take a listen to some of the keynote speeches from the 75th UN General Assembly. Facing the virus, we should show concern for and accommodate the need of developing countries, especially African countries. The international community needs to take timely and robust measures in such fields as debt relief and international assistance, ensure the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and help these countries overcome their difficulties. As the founders of the UN stood at a crossroads in 1945, so do we 75 years later. They answered history's call to craft a new order for a world in crisis. Today we battle the fires of a deadly pandemic, of racism and prejudice, of violence, war and extremism, and above all, of poverty and inequality. The order we seek to build must be rooted in solidarity, equality, and unity of purpose. Kenya believes strongly that if we remain anchored in multilateralism and with unity of purpose, if we are much more agile in embracing change and positive transformations, if we, may, if we remain rooted in a rule-based international system and act innovatively and selflessly, we can transcend our challenges and secure a lasting peace and prosperity for all. Kenya once again calls for urgent collective action to halt the dissemination of our biodiversity. We must find a global balance between human beings and other creatures on our earth. We must put harmony between people and nature. Well, it's been a very busy week at the United Nations this week. And joining me to discuss the ongoing UN General Assembly and the future of multilateralism in Lagos, Nigeria, Dr. Ifem Ubi, the Acting Director General of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. In Beijing, via Skype, is Victor Gao, the Vice President of the Center for China and Globalization. From Lisbon in Portugal, via Skype, we have Professor George Braga de Macedo, a Professor of Economics at Nova University in Lisbon and a Distinguished Fellow at the Center for International Governance Innovation. And also joining me from Johannesburg via Skype is Sifa Mandla Sizondi, a Professor at the Department of Politics and International Relations at the University of Johannesburg. Gentlemen, thank you and welcome to the program. Well, the United Nations General Assembly went ahead with its annual meeting, but for the first time in its history, virtually via a video because of the coronavirus pandemic. Gentlemen, I want to start by getting a thought, your thoughts on what transpired at the UN General Assembly. What stands out for you in regard to the debate at the General Assembly? I'll start off with you, Victor Gao in Beijing. 
Thank you very much. I think uh, this year the United Nations General Assembly sessions are even more important because the world is at a crossroad. The COVID-19 pandemic is wreaking havoc in the world. Lots of people are being affected. Hundreds of people have died, for example. It's a great tragedy. And I think mankind need to know what's the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing to do. And I think in his important speech to the United Nations General Assembly, President Xi Jinping of China made it very clear the COVID-19 pandemic is a common enemy of, of mankind. And international cooperation is absolutely important. We need to make our joint effort right. to work together to fight off this common enemy of mankind. Professor De Macedo, your thoughts? Well, I think uh, 75 is a very important uh, symbolic date, you know, the diamond, uh, if you are married, uh, the diamond uh, anniversary. Uh, and so it is a moment uh, for reflection, quite aside from the dramatic situation in health in many countries. I think uh, the most important point I would make is that the rules-based international system is under threat. Uh, the United Nations are a fundamental dimension of it, but far from being the only one. Uh, for example, the IMF and the World Bank are not in the so-called UN family, but they remain extremely relevant. So this is another point uh, where we have to think about the UN, for sure, but about many other organizations, and some of them, of course, are not universal. They are regional. The European Union comes to mind, and other organizations in Africa, the African Union, in Asia, and in the Americas. Sifa Mandla Sizonde, your thoughts? Uh, for me, um, this uh, UNGA uh, demonstrated for us how the, the future might look like, uh, the future UNGA might look like. It was, it was digitized, and, and therefore there were a lot more people who could listen into this conversation that tend to be dominated by a small group of people, diplomats and government officials who are able to gather in New York. But this time it was opened up to the whole world. But in the process, we also got to see that in future, we will also battle with the demons of the past, the demon of ultra-nationalism, the demon of my country first, the demon of populism against uh, the good of cooperation, of international solidarity, of solving transnational problems at the same time. In the case of uh, the U.S. position, for example, you could see that, that battle. In the case of Turkey's position uh, on, on the Greece issue, uh, in the case of Qatar, de uh, dealing with the issue of Saudi Arabia, and all of that, you could see that dynamic of the clash between the future and the past. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Ubi in Lagos? Yeah, uh, this uh, 75th UN uh, General Assembly, uh, a lot of things stand out, but critically what is much more of importance and priority to the international community today is uh, the war against COVID-19, uh, which is one aspect of the, the most uh, important thing that uh, the, the, the Committee of Nations have come together to talk about and see how they could fight this pandemic. Now, second is multilateralism. It still remains very, very important as it was before. You know, COVID-19 has shown that multilateralism must play a very critical role in, in order to, to, to safeguard mankind or humankind. You know, if not, we'll, we'll be uh, 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 taking ourselves uh, towards extinction. Now, another very important aspect of uh, the uh, General Assembly uh, what important discourse in the General Assembly is that of uh, development, especially for the developing countries and um, of Africa, you know, and I think uh, President Xi Jinping actually mentioned that, and that I think it is high time, you know, that uh, we all lend our hands to uh, Africa, give their support, the world should come and give support to Africa. Now, much more importantly, the blame war that is ongoing, too, is of, of cri critical importance. Right. You know, I think at this point in time, we shouldn't be talking about uh, what caused what and uh, who is the, the, who brought about this. I think what we should do is to look for ways in which we can win this war, the war against COVID-19 pandemic.
All right. So the, the message from the UN General Assembly was that of supporting solidarity and multilateralism. And, and, and uh, Sifa Mandla, you've mentioned this uh, in your um, opening statement there. So there were different positions regarding uh, multilateralism and how the world uh, should be viewing and moving ahead with multilateralism. What is your understanding, though, Sifa Mandla, of the global environment in which the leaders at UNGA were passing this message? What COVID-19 did was to force countries to think very carefully about where they stand in that big, long spectrum between ultra-nationalism, the sense that you can, you can depend on yourself, fend for yourself, you can, you can address your own interests on your own uh, on one extreme, and the other extreme that says you require the cooperation with others. COVID-19 forced countries to locate themselves in that. Which is why in the, process, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the course of COVID-19, we saw a rise of multilateralism, um, a, a, a reaffirmation of the importance of the institutions of the United Nations, reformed, strengthened, uh, the importance of international cooperation, of international solidarity. At the same time, we saw a rise of ultra-nationalism in, in the likes of Trump, uh, in, in the likes of Bolsonaro uh, and others who are skeptical of international cooperation. And, and yet, uh, in order to deal with COVID-19, have had to be forced uh, to recognize the importance of multilateral cooperation, of learning from other countries in order to fight this. In many ways, the ultranationalism was kind of discredited uh, by, by COVID-19. But in, in, for, for, for purposes of cementing they are constituencies. Right. It is likely that these uh, leaders will continue to defy what has become the wisdom and continue to hold on to our nationalist idea, which is why they came on the floor of UNGA and argued against the collective wisdom uh, of, the, of the world in the past six months, which is that you cannot defeat any of these transnational enemies alone. You cannot defeat COVID-19. Uh, Brazil, you cannot... Uh, uh, defeat climate change alone. Uh, other countries who cannot defeat uh, uh, other challenges that are transnational alone. Uh, but that is the problem of ultra-nationalist ideology that defines the logic of our, of our collective experience. Professor De Macedo, you know, we have seen, though, countries taking a rather unilateral approach when it comes to uh, handling or management of uh, COVID-19. And we've heard the leaders, most of them strongly talking about uh, reaffirming support for multilateralism. How would you rate the response to that call for multilateralism? Well, I mentioned the multilateralism because I think it's, of course, uh, essential. But one should not forget the so-called principle of subsidiarity, which has been crucial, for example, in a glo um, supranational experience such as the European Union. And we have noted that many European countries that are very close to each other have adopted sometimes so-called beggar thy neighbor policies. And even within countries, there were regions that differed from the others. So even though I understand the difficulties and the differences, I mean, the differences are part of multilateralism. And one should be uh, reluctant to uh, start saying, well, these are good, the good ones, the other are the bad ones. Pandemic is such a new challenge that it requires efficiency rather than, uh, you know, very lofty aspirations. So I, without trying to register a disagreement with what I have heard, I remind you of the difficulties in practice of carrying out the UN mission. And this is the best way to reflect on the 71st anniversary, is seeing, well, there are good things and there are things that are not so good. Dr. Ifem Ubi Sifa Mandla from Johannesburg uh, mentioned an issue that Africa has taken uh, to the United General on various occasions, that of reforming the UN Security Council. And that, uh, that is what Africa is asking for, for a, a permanent seat uh, at the, African, uh, at the uh, UN Sec Security Council to give Africa greater representation on the table. Your thoughts? Africa is asking for uh, about two uh, permanent seats with uh, all the uh, veto powers 
you know, and this is critical if we have to uh, democratize the United Nations or democratize the, the Security Council. I think uh, it is not uh, uh, very palatable to, to, you know, being a member of an organization where a uh, few countries determine, you know, uh, for the rest of the world. I know uh, if we have to have a democratic multilateral organization, you know, I think that should be taken, every country should be, the interest of every country should be taken into consideration. All right, gentlemen, uh, we'll stop there for the moment and take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more from the ongoing 75th UN General Assembly to stay with us. Life moves pretty fast. Ideas move at the speed of sound. Technology moves at the speed of light. If you don't filter out the noise, you might miss the details. We pay attention to the details because they matter. Showing you a different perspective. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Let's continue our discussion. Still with me from Lagos, Nigeria, Dr. Ifem Ubi. Uh, joining us from Beijing, still with us, Victor Gao. And uh, with us from Lisbon, Professor George de Macedo. And in Johannesburg, Sifa Mandla C. Zondi. Victor Gao, I want to get a bit of understanding about your interpretation of uh, President Xi Jinping's uh, speech because in his speech, uh, President Xi Jinping said that China has no intention to fight a cold or hot war with anyone. He also announced further funding to the UN Global Humanitarian Response Plan and the China FAO South-South Cooperation uh, Trust Fund. Interpret for us President Xi's speech here. Absolutely. I think President Xi Jinping made a very important speech because he emphasizing peace and development, and the importance of mercy in hegemony. And I think, uh, in contrast to this, we all have seen that there are certain countries which really want to put itself or themselves above the rest of the world. And this is exactly what China is not going to accept. China is not going to become a superpower, as we call it, but China wants to treat every other country as equals and share with all the other countries, China's lessons and track records of economic development and lifting hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, developing infrastructure, for example, and also doing a heroic fight against COVID-19 pandemic. And I think this is important because the world now is at a crossroad. I think we need to urge all countries, as President Xi Jinping has done, to stand firm for peace. Right. Uh, Professor De Macedo, let me just come back to you um, on your thoughts on um, differences being part of multilateralism. U.S. President Donald Trump's message was largely, uh, you know, an America first uh, policy there, different from the theme of uh, pro reaffirming support for multilateralism. Interpret for us the context of uh, President Trump's message here. Well, uh, you know, one should distinguish the statements that heads of state make and the uh, fundamental principles of foreign policy by their own countries. And this is true of a very small country like Portugal or a very large country like the U.S. Uh, so what I meant to say, and I want to emphasize it because it could be seen as uh, different from the idea of science first, which it is not. I mean, science is not a lofty principle. It has to be put in practice amongst individual peoples in particular places. And if Europe, uh, I mean, where there is a fairly similar civilization, of course, enormous differences, for example, between the Portuguese and the Spaniards, I would never dispute that. But still, we have tried to learn to deal with our differences. And with COVID, it was not such a good success. And let me just add to finish that Africa is an excellent example of that as well. Who could deny that the African Union is an aspiration that is felt by most Africans? And yet we know the difficulties. So all I'm doing here is not registering 
that science is not fundamental is how to do it is the point. All right, uh, Sifo Mandel, let me get your thoughts on this, listening in on the, uh, on the views on multilateralism. Your thoughts? Yes, um, COVID-19 has, uh, has demonstrated for us um, how important it is uh, for us to use collective wisdom. Uh, and that wisdom will come from experiences of various countries, uh, both experiences out of the practices and, and confronting difficulties and, uh, and dealing with issues, but also wisdom coming out of the science of research and, and, and finding and identifying uh, problems and identifying solutions to it. And that all of that wisdom collected together will always help countries that may not have the means on their own uh, to find the best way to solve them. So for us on the African continent, uh, for us in the developing world, uh, that collective wisdom is collected by the United Nations and its agents. And it brings to us solutions that we would not have known, we would not have used had we, did, we, did, we, we, we had we not had access to these things. And, and therefore, we're forever grateful for the existence of the United Nations, which we want transformed. The United Nations uh, is reaffirmed until we find something that is credibly altern an alternative as the uh, most important instrument of multilateralism and international solidarity and cooperation. All right. So, uh, gentlemen, I want to get your final uh, thoughts um, uh, as we wind up the program because I do want to come to you with the UN theme, which was the future we want, the UN we need, reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism. It is 75 years later. Isn't it ironic that 75 years later the UN is still talking about the UN we need or the future we want? Uh, uh, Professor Di Masibo, let me start off with you. Uh, yes, thank you. I, I want to uh, make a point that will help uh, understand the answer uh, that I have. I mean, uh, unilateralism is something that in the world as we know it is impossible to eliminate without having a very different system of international relations. But it should be understood that it is a short-term weapon. In other words, you do it and then you get a bad reputation. And the next time you have more trouble doing it and in the end you're unable uh, to do it this is the way uh, it is um, analytically of course if the country is very large it takes longer but that's the way it is the first point is that the second one is that regional cooperation is as important as global and the third is that the UN cannot do everything I started out by saying that organizations such as the IMF and the World Bank. They are part of the multilateral system, but they are not in the UN family. They don't report to the Secretary General. And you know how many meetings there were involving these institutions all together in the last 75 years? You know how many? One. One. In Monterrey, Mexico, at the turn of the century. This was the only meeting. So I think we should also convey the message that the UN we want is a UN that deals with other international organizations, not perhaps on an equal footing, but on a partnership basis, which has not been the case. Uh, so this is, my, this is my hope, is that we can find a multilateralism that works for people, not just that's very lofty, but that works for people, for all of us. Sipa Madla, is the UN still as effective playing its role in the world today? Uh, in, in the absence of an alternative, the UN is the best thing we have, which is why for the past 70 years, the Global South have been arguing that uh, what we should be doing is to strengthen it, is to improve it, uh, is to strengthen it in two ways. One, in terms of its efficiency, managerial uh, uh, systems and so on, and secondly, in terms of its legitimacy, which is inclusion, which is uh, serving the interests of everyone equally. And, and definitely the United Nations has been very critical for humanitarian assistance, uh, for guiding peace building in our continent, uh, for generating the thoughts of economic policy, has been the most reliable partner uh, when it, it comes to poverty eradication, 
and therefore the UN has played a critical role uh, for us, especially to defend our fragile independence in a world dominated by 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 the U by North America and, and Europe. And uh, the, the UN can only improve from this point going forward. So we agree with the statement of the uh, of the Secretary General that the UN is at a point where it could actually do a lot more on the basis of the, of the heritage of the past uh, that it needs to do. Victor Gao, should we still be talking about the UN we need 75 years later? Well, I think mankind should be grateful for the United Nations because over the past 75 years, there has been no global or world <laughs> war. And I think the United Nations is a very important reason why we have avoided a global war. Secondly, I think if we do without the United Nations, then mankind will have less safety and more likelihood for another global war. So even if we are not perfectly happy with the United Nations as it is, because nothing is perfect, we should be fully aware of the fact that without the United Nations, mankind may have more and more obstructions on a global basis, and it will be really a disaster for mankind. So we need to do all, all our homework to make sure that the United Nations is more efficient, is more representative, is more equitable, mm. and is more empowered to take the madness faced with. And in this regard, I think international cooperation is becoming more and more important because there are many issues that no single country can deal with it on itself. For example, global pandemic, uh, climate change, for example, global warming. All these things require collective efforts of all the countries involved on a global basis. The United Nations is the only such organization which has the representativeness and authority, legal as well as moral, to lead mankind forward in this work. We need to have confidence in right. the United Nations, and we need to do all we can to nurture the United Nations for a better tomorrow. All right, uh, Dr. Ifem Ubi, you have the final word. Uh, African leaders raise pertinent issues at the General Assembly, uh, issues of uh, international cooperation, uh, multilateralism, issues of uh, the democratization of the UN Security Council, uh, also raise issues of uh, the fight against uh, COVID-19 pandemic. You know, these are pertinent issues that have shown that the, the, as it is right now, no individual nation can fight this, uh, this alone. You know, peace and security can be an individual nation thing alone. You know, the, we need concerted effort. The international system, uh, the committee of nations must have to come together, you know, to make sure that uh, these problems that are actually uh, engulfing the globe, you know, is, is solved, you know, amicably and uh, through concerted effort and cooperation. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of Talk Africa. A big thank you to our panel in Lagos, Nigeria, Dr. Ifem Ubi, a former acting director general of the Nigeria Institute of International Affairs. In Beijing, Victor Gao, vice president of the Center for China and Globalization. In Lisbon, Professor George Braga de Macedo, professor of economics at Nova University in Lisbon and distinguished fellow at the Center for International Governance Innovation. And from Johannesburg, Sifa Mandla Sizondi, Professor of the Department of Politics and International Relations, University of Johannesburg. Remember, we'd love to hear your feedback and do keep the conversation going online through our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And do tune in again next week for more Talk Africa. From me, Beatrice Marshall, until next week, it's goodbye.